Hi everybody, welcome back sa ating formal discussion ng iyong heparin, um, heparin medication. Now, let us be your nursing study guide. This is another entry natin sa ating nursing pharmacology. Um, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing video materials na kinate ko under nursing pharma, I'll be putting the actual playlist on the description box or kapag nagpapout yung icon button anytime on this video, click the one out because I'll be providing the links there and also the links to other playlists that I have on my channel. I created Tons and tons and tons of lecture materials, um, NCLEX materials, and nursing materials, um, board exam type of question materials sa akin channel, including your medical surgical nursing, anatomy, and so on and so forth. Gamitin mo yun para sa inyo yun lahat. Ngayon, kung mapapansin nyo, sa video na to, hindi na ako gumawa ng intro, ng outro. Wala na. Direkta na tayo. Rekta na tayo. Kaya arat na arat na to. Okay? Pero, none of that will change the fact that I'm still gonna be providing you with a thorough discussion and a nursing study guide for you to master the heparin medication. So, sa video na to, you guys, uh, mag-e-enter na tayo sa formal discussion natin na I'll be giving you the classification of your heparin, mechanism of action, indications, contraindications, adverse effects, and nursing responsibilities. So, yun yung mga objectives natin for today. Bagong slide din tong ipapresent ko sa inyo. So, inaral ko to. So, sana magustuhan nyo. Let me know if you like the slides compared to the other slides I created. I just wanted to change it up for a bit and give myself a little bit of challenge. And of course, nako, bago tayo mag-proceed, gusto ko lang i grabe itong opportunity ah uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I grab itong opportunity na to para naman pasalamatan ka na ikaw na nakikinig ngayon. Parang podcast lang, di ba, ang peg. Ikaw na nakikinig ngayon at um, sa lahat sa inyo na talaga namang sumusuporta, pa 15,000 na po tayo. I cannot believe you guys. You made it all happen. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. Ngayon, kung hindi ka pa nagsusubscribe bago tayo magpatuloy, uh, mag, talaga namang mag-umpisa, mag-subscribe ka na pang palaki charm. Pang palaki charm para naman bonggam-bongga na ang pag- uh, um, lagu ng ating channel, i-share mo na itong video na to. I-follow mo na ako so my, to my, all my other social media accounts. I have Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikToks, um, uh, YouTube, of course, and I have a Facebook page. It's called Neil Gave. So, please, please, check the one out. All the links na mga pinagsasabi ko, lahat nasa baba. So, panoorin mo yon. Check the one out. Support me out. And give this video a big thumbs up kasi malaking tulong po talaga yon. Ngayon, hindi ko na patatagalin pa. Eto na. <clears throat> So, heparin. Nako, pamilyar kayo dito. Pamilyar na pamilyar kayo. Tatalakayin natin sila o itong medication na to isa-isa. Kasi this is one of the high alert medications that we considered. Okay? So, classification. Ano ba ang classification ng heparin mo? O diba? Glycosaminoglycan. Glycosaminoglycan. That is the classification of heparin. Now, heparin is an anticoagulant indicated for thrombo prophylaxis. Pag sinabing thromboprophylaxis, prevention, prophylaxis, prevention of thrombosis, and to treat the actual thrombosis associated with a variety of conditions such as your pulmonary embolism and atrial fibrillation. Uh, fibrillation, excuse me. And what are the brand names available in the market? You have your heparin, uh, heparin Leo. Generic name, of course, is heparin. Okay? So, in terms of classification, it is glycosaminoglycan. Perfect. Malinaw yon. Malinaw. So, tapos na tayo sa classification, you guys. Sana tayo sa mechanism of action. So, in terms of mechanism of action, um, heparin is what we call the AT, triple I, dependent, AT. Um, it acts mainly by accelerating the rate of the neutralization of certain activated coagulation factors by, by anti-thrombin. Uh, Pag sinabi mong thrombin, thrombus, clot, blood clot. But other mechanisms may also be involved. The anti-thrombotic effect of heparin is well correlated to the inhibition of factor XA. Okay, mag-alala, kalma, kalma. Ano ba yung mga pinagsasabi kong XA? Ano ba tong ate na to, yung triple I? Narinig mo na to, nurse, w nurses. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Under normal circumstances, antitrombin 3, o yung tinatawag nating ATI, ATII, -I, inactivates thrombin factor 2A the fact and factor XA. This process occurs at a slow rate administered heparin binds reversibly to ATIII and leads to almost instantaneous inactivation 
of factors 2a and xa the heparin at triple i complex can also inactivate factors what your factors 9 your factors 11 um factors 12 also and your plasmine uh, the mechanism of action of heparin is AT triple I dependent. It acts mainly by accelerating the rate of neutralization of certain activated coagulation factors by antithrombin. But other mechanisms may also be involved. Kagaya nung sinabi ko kanina. You guys, the lysis of existing clots relies on indigenous thrombolytics. Period. So, malino ba sa iyo yung mechanism of action? Malinaw. Tapos na tayo sa mechanism of action. Dito na tayo. Saan? Sa indication. Kanino ba natin o bakit ba tayo nag administer ng, ng uh, heparin? Kanino siya indicated? Ito na. Tatalakay natin sila isa-isa. Now, unfractionated heparin is anticoagulant indicated for both the prevention and treatment of thrombotic events such as ano-ano ba yung mga thrombotic events na sinabi ko? DVT o yung, yung deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism PE as well as AF o yung iyong atrial fibrillation. Heparin is uh, administered to manage the following conditions. Nurses, listen. Prophylaxis and treatment for venous thromboembolism, pulmonary embolism, and peripheral arterial embolism. Who else? Atrial fibrillation with immobilization. Sa mga pasyenteng nag afib at immobile, binibigyan natin yung heparin. Prophylaxis, kasi nga naman, walang proper blood circulation. Okay? Chap. Para maiwasan yung pag-travel o pamumuo ng dugo. Next one is treatment of acute and chronic disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC. May mga pasyente ako na handle na merong ganitong klase ng disorder and yes, nagre-receive sila ng heparin. Um, normally, twice a day, 5,000 units sub-Q. Alright, next, you have your prevention of clotting in procedures, usually during arterial and cardiac surgery. Uh, very crucial po ang heparin infusion, ang heparin treatment dahil sa mga pasyente na undergo ng cardiac surgery or arterial surgery. Kasi nga, uh, risk for bleeding sila. So, binibigay natin ito. Next is, as an anticoagulant used in blood transfusions, dialysis, extracorporeal, or corporeal circulation. Pag nagda-dialysis, normally ginagawa nila, pinaprime nila yung line ng heparin or during the dialysis there's actually an ongoing heparin infusion para maiwasan yung blood clotting all right so once again these are the indications of your um, heparin infusion or heparin administration. Malino ba sa inyo yun ang bongga ng slides, di ba? Let me know anong comment nyo sa slides. And dito sa bago nating trick. Alright, so dito na tayo sa, tapos na tayo sa indications. Malino sa inyo yon. Contraindications na tayo, nurses. Okay. <clears throat> so, ah, Nasaan na ba ako? Sorry po, sorry po. Dito tayo sa contraindication. So, pag sinabi mong contraindication, absolute uh, contraindications to heparin include known hypersensitivity, of course, past or present heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and active bleeding. Yes, hindi siya binibigay sa mga pasyente may thrombocytopenia. Hindi mo rin siya ibibigay sa mga uh, may allergy sa heparin. And then, hindi mo rin siya lalong ibibigay sa mga pasyente may active bleeding. Bakit? Kasi lalo silang magbi-bleed. Huwag kang syunga nurse. So ito, nilista ko para sa inyo para lalo naman talagang maalala nyo. Hindi rin mo rin siya ibibigay or contraindicated siya sa mga pasyente may history of pentosane, polysulfate induced thrombocytopenia yung ating hits, either in the presence or absence of thrombosis. Uncontrolled active bleeding um, except DIC or di disseminated intravascular coagulation. Conditions where inappropriate intervals for testing coagulation cannot be done. You are also not going to give heparin or this is also contraindicated for instances where sodium or chloride administration could be harmful to the patient. Only for large volume heparin, 2 units per ml solutions. Lastly, hypersensitivity to heparin or pork products. Yes. So once again, you guys, these are the contraindications of your heparin administration. Okay. So malino ba sa inyo yung contraindications ng yung heparin infusion? Mali na. Ito na tayo sa yung adverse effects. So ang pinaka main adverse effects ng yung heparin is of course bleeding o yung uh, yeah bleeding pagdudugo.
Now, associated adverse effects of heparin may include the following. Hemorrhage or uncontrolled bleeding in the body. It could be internal, it could be external bleeding. Pag external, mapapansin mo yun. Malbalis mo makikita because you can easily visualize it. Ang problema kapag internal bleeding yung pinag-uusapan natin. Because it needs like keen assessment for you to rule out or for you to rule out and do some laboratories for you to rule out that there is an active internal bleeding. What else? Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia yung hit and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis. Usually the delayed reaction. What else? Uh, ano pa yung mga adverse effects mo? Thrombocytopenia. Heparin resistance. You have your mild pain and ulcer to the most injection site, presiding a deep subcutaneous injection. Kaya, wait lang, mabalik tayo. Kaya pag uh, nag administer ng heparin, kailangan mo rin i-rotate yung site. Parang insulin lang yan. Next, elevations of the liver aminotransferase. Aspirate aminotransferase, so yung ating AST, and alanine aminotransferase, yung ating ALT. Commonly, may extract, uh, may through blood serum naman to, pwede mo siyang i-rule out kung may elevation ng AST and ALT. Uh, blood serum lang to. Next, immune uh, immune hypersensitivity reaction uh, reactions such as generalized reactions of chills, fever, uh, urticaria, asthma, rhinitis, headache, nausea, and vomiting, etc. Lastly, you have your osteoporosis related to chronic high dose usage. So, ingat ingat tayo sa um, infusion natin ng ating heparin, okay? So, malino ba sa inyo yung adverse effects ng ating heparin infusion? Of course, malino yon. Magpoposit na tayo sa ating nursing responsibilities. Eto na po. So, sa ating nursing respon uh, ref sa ating nursing responsibilities, I list down a uh, four focus nursing care plan na pwede mo magamit sa um sa pag uh, sa pag treat mo or when you whenever you're dealing with patients who is receiving heparin infusion or heparin um injection. So, four focus nursing care plan. Of course, this is not limited to these four, but I I'm just gonna give you um a uh, four list or four example nursing care plan. Alright, eto na tayo. So first up, I have your, um, on the slides, we're going to have the nursing care plan, for examples of nursing care plan, and the nursing interventions, including the rationalization. So I list down here, of course, risk for bleeding. You have your acute pain or headache, uh, nausea and vomiting, and also constipation. So these are the common problems or the problems that you might arise for patients who, uh, who are actively receiving heparin infusion or heparin injection. So, ano yung mga nursing responsibilities and interventions mo? Well, one, administer heparin as prescribed, taking in consideration the most recent coagulation test result. Why, nurses? To ensure medicine compliance and lower the risk for bleeding to develop. Next, Avoid giving intramuscular injections to the patient once heparin therapy has started. Heparin increases the risk for hematoma formation. All right. Next, kasi nga anticoagulant ito. Eh. Now, if incorporating heparin to um, intravenous infusion, mix the combined solution well. This is to ensure that all of the prescribed heparin dose will be given to the patient. Alright? So, take note nyo yung mga rationale ha? Kasi magagamit nyo yan. Sa nursing, kailangan lagi meron tayong rationalization. Nako, malapit na pala tayong matapos sa ating discussion. Bago lang. Bago lang tayo. Kung nakaabot ka ng hanggang dulo ng discussion na ito, anong masasabi mo dito sa bago nating style sa ating video? O di ba ang lakas maka-podcast lang? Para naman, kahit sa inyo ko dalhin kapag nag-gym, naliligo kayo, pwede nyo akong pakinggan anytime, anywhere. <laughs> nag, nag, na, nasa biyahe kayo or nasa middle kayo ng traffic, you can listen out to me. Nakikinig ka na sa beautiful voice ko. Di ba tumatawa ka na? Natututo ka pa. Laburn. Kung hindi ka pa nagsasubscribe, mag-subscribe ka na sa channel ko kasi I swear to God, I will make it worth it. Anong next? Ang next is avoid adding heparin to the infusion lines of other medications uh, or piggybacking. 
other drugs into the line used for uh, for heparin therapy. Bakit? Kasi ang heparin natin dapat separate line to. Kung ang pasyente mo naka-infusion pump, normally dalawang infus- uh, infusion pump yung gagamitin mo. High alert po ang heparin, hindi siya dapat minimix sa iba. Kung may ongoing IV fluids ang yung pasyente, kailangan may isa kang infusion pump doon at may isa kang separate uh, delegated um Uh, infusion pump solely for your heparin infusion. This is to ensure patient safety. Ayaw mo kasi magkaroon ng drug interaction. Ayaw mo nun. Next, what what else? What else? Nako. Next is educate the patient about the action, indication, common side effects, and adverse reactions to note uh, when taking heparin. Allow time for the patient to ask questions about the drug. Why nurses to inform the patient on the basics of heparin and also to encourage compliance. All right. Next, advise the patient to report any headache, episode of nose bleeding, or yung tinatawag nating epistaxis, chills, or a feeling of nausea or episodes of vomiting. Nausea and vomiting, headache, and episode of nosebleed epistaxis, chills, are signs and symptoms of adverse effects of heparin therapy, which render the medical team to immediately respond to resolve these issues related to heparin. Okay, malinaw ba yon? Malinaw. Now, lastly, in case of heparin poisoning, Administer or poisoning or toxicity, uh, administer activated charcoal as prescribed. Now, bakit? Activated charcoal is effective in absorbing the salicylate from the stomach to prevent further absorption. Okay? Malino yon. Nako, eh, dito na nga nagtatapos ang ating uh, video for today. Thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics that you want us to do. Comment it down below. Abangan yung nga po yung next video material natin regarding sa nursing. Um, regarding sa nursing, it could be anything under the nursing. We can really talk about it. And, um... If you have other comments, other suggestions, or other medications, other topics that you want me to touch sa nursing, kasi napaka-broad nun, put it down on the comments section below. Tulungan nyo na nga po ako, okay? pamalitan nyo na sa radyong sila ang pinakabago, pinaka-fresh, at ang pinaka-libring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. And I'll see you again in seven days. You have a good one. Fighters.